So hi, I'm Winnie from the developer platform team, and today we'll be exploring how the team built a Markdown parser in our Ruby on Rails app. Part of our team's responsibilities include supporting tech writers and other engineers in keeping our documentation website up to date with new articles and guides to help support our external developers build with our APIs. So here's an example of an article that we have in HTML. Notice that if we take away the content, there's a lot here that a writer doesn't really need to care about. For instance, what's with all this complex syntax? When should I use a section versus a P? What are these arcanely named classes? Should I know HTML even if I'm a mobile developer? A problem with HTML is that it doesn't enforce a good barrier between contents and styles. Writers should only have to worry about writing great content and not HTML shenanigans or CSS styling. As we thought about it more, Markdown emerged as a natural solution for this problem. Markdown has really clean source files with an emphasis on content. Tech writers are already used to Markdown since it's what most readmes are written in. And even if they were unfamiliar, it's definitely a lot easier to learn than HTML. For comparison, here's the article that I showed you before in HTML. And here it is again in Markdown. There's no extra stuff about CSS classes or distracting HTML tags. And emphasized content is way easier to see in the text editor. At the same time, Markdown also has some limitations. We didn't want to use a pure Markdown framework like Jekyll because we were already on a Rails app, which had a lot of custom components and Rails helpers that we wanted to keep using. So in the end, we decided to build our own custom solution in order to use Markdown templates without sacrificing all the cool things we could already do with Ruby on Rails. Cool, so let's build a Markdown parser. To start, what happens if we just make a Markdown file and then try to load it as one of our regular pages? Hmm, that doesn't look too great. Let's try and figure out what's going on. Let's think about how ActionView renders a page. ActionView is the Rails internal library responsible for rendering views. So let's say we start with a regular HTML.erb file. First, ActionView will check the page extension of the file and try to find a template handler for that file type. In this case, it's a .erb file, so it tries to find an erb template handler. In this case, it finds one. When it's called, this erb template handler transforms the template into a special Ruby encoded string. This string is evaluated as Ruby a little bit later by the action view template compile method. And eventually, it becomes the HTML document that the browser sees. On the other hand, we want to render a .md file. So what happens in this case? Again, ActionView will try to find the template handler for the .md extension. But this time, it finds nothing. Yep, which is why we got that error. ActionView doesn't have any handlers by default to render Markdown. It only comes with the ones in the bottom row. So in order to render Markdown files like we want to, we have to roll our own. OK, so we need to write this Markdown handler class and then register it as the handler for .md extension files. For now, we can use one of Rails' prepackaged handlers, the raw handler, as a base. The raw handler, when it's called, just outputs the source template material as is, without any alterations, in a string form, like so. In order to hook in our own code, we have to take the result from the raw handler and then put it through our own renderer. Note that we have to keep it in string form so that ActionView can interpret it later as Ruby. So now we have a template handler, but we're not quite done yet. We need to actually write this renderer. So what kinds of things should our renderer do? Well, to begin with, we should probably figure out the basics, like parsing Markdown, parsing ERB, and HTML. But given our documentation website use case, there are also a bunch of other things that would be nice to have. Whoa, that seems like a lot of stuff. As it turns out, ActionView already handles HTML parsing because of the call to HTML safe generated by our handler. Also, we can make it parse ERB pretty easily simply by changing our base raw handler to Rails's ERB handler. OK, so we can call those done. For everything else, we saw an opportunity to use a pipes and filters structure. Each filter is a data processor, which takes an input, transforms it somehow, and outputs a result. Then this result is piped as input into the next filter, and so on. The last filter produces the final result. This was ideal because we wanted our renderer to do a lot of things, and it organizes and enforces a strict order of operations on them. As a bonus, it also makes it really easy to add additional functionality to our renderer in the future, since we can always add more filters. <laughs> 
it would make sense if each of the things we wanted our renderer to do was handled by its own filter. And then arrange in an order that makes sense for processing the template through. OK, so let's start writing this pipes and filters structure. Uh, we should call it a pipeline. The class is initialized with our specific set of filters in order. Then, in the call method, each of the filters is called in succession with reduce, which lends itself particularly well to the act of piping output through multiple filters the way we wanted it to. We can now create the markdown renderer class that's used in our template handler, using that custom built pipeline that we just saw. OK, so what does the process of rendering one of these markdown files actually look like if we step through filter by filter? So here's an example of a markdown file. It has some front matter for metadata, a placeholder for where we want our table of contents to go, some HTML and ERB elements that we want to work, and markdown syntax, including code blocks, which is really important for a documentation website. We're going to follow the source file through the rendering pipeline and see what it looks like at each step. So first, again, ActionView will look at the file extension for the file and see that it's .md. Then it'll check for a registered template handler for that file type. This time, it finds the markdown handler that we wrote. When markdown handler.call is executed, it'll in turn call the Rails ERB handler. So we haven't entered our custom built pipeline yet, but the first step is to parse ERB. At this point, the page looks something like this. Not great, but the HTML rendered, as we expected, and also the Rails link to helper generated a hyperlink, thanks to the ERB handler. Next, remember the special Ruby encoded string that we crafted? It passes the output of the ERB handler into our own renderer when it's evaluated. So when ActionView interprets this code, it enters our pipes and filters setup. So the first filter is metadata filter, which parses the YAML front matter. This is how we retain information, like what the article ID is, for our URL scheme. It gets added as metadata in the results hash, which is passed on to the other filters using reduce. Then the front matter is stripped from the markdown file. On the render page, we can see a very minor change that the plain text front matter has disappeared. Next, markdown filter. This is where the magic happens. The markdown filter uses common marker, a third party library, to transform basic markdown into HTML. On the rendered view, this is what the page looks like before it enters the markdown handler, and this is how it looks afterwards. There's a big difference. Most of the styles can now show up, since headers and paragraphs are recognized, and also text styles. All right, so most of the things we have to do left are special cases for our documentation website. Code block filter's job is to add syntax highlighting, line numbers, or both. Note that before the filter, the code block looks pretty bland. But afterwards, it's really snazzy. We have the ability to highlight syntax for all the different languages that you can interact with our APIs with. Next, the anchor filter adds anchors to each heading on the page with a unique ID according to the header contents. Then, the table of contents filter uses these anchors to build the dynamic table of contents and links to these places on the page using the anchor IDs. We're almost done, but our page still looks kind of weird. Finally, the article filter splits the article into sections according to header placement, wraps all of them in an article tag, and adds the necessary classes for styling the page nicely. Hooray! We successfully built an HTML page with Markdown without sacrificing our special components, like a dynamic table of contents, special code blocks, and other Rails helpers. We also made it a lot easier to add custom components in the future as well. <laughs>